Hi, and welcome to Huntington Hoppers. I'm Sherry Kayer, and I want to walk you through the reservation day process. The first thing you should do is take a look at the website and preview all of the bunnies that are available to reserve. Pay attention to what breed they are. We have Holland Lops and Netherland Dwarfs and what sex they are, if that's important for you. You'll also see the re ready to leave date. Some bunnies are ready to leave earlier than others, so make a note of that. You can also click on the more info button if you'd like to get uh, some more information or uh, see more pictures of each bunny. Now, as you're looking at the bunnies, make a note of your top five choices. Write down the code somewhere on some scrap paper at home because you're going to need those codes when the reservation form opens. On the website, it'll tell you exactly what day and what time the reservation form will open. Prior to that point, it is going to remain closed. At that point, click on the link either found within the uh, more information portion of each bunny posting. There's a link down there or the main link on the bunnies for sale page. They'll both bring you to the exact same place, so it doesn't matter what link you click. But click on that link the moment the reservation window opens. The sooner, the better. They go fast. When you open up the form, it's going to give you a place to fill in your email, your name, and the best number to reach you via text in case I need to get in touch with you quickly as I'm sorting through all the data. Then it's going to ask you how many bunnies you would like to adopt from us, either one or two. You only have to select uh, an option in the next box if you plan to adopt two bunnies. If you're only going to get one, then don't worry about it. But if you do want two, you can select either two females or a male and a female. I don't recommend getting two males, uh, so that's why that is not an option. After you've done that, you're going to be able to actually select your top five choices. This is where that list you made comes in handy. There are five drop down menus and they all look identical. The same options are in each one. You just have to put them in the right order. So take a look at your list, figure out what your top choice is, find it in the list and select it. And then go to the second choice, find your second option in the list and so forth. You don't have to fill out all five choices. You could theoretically put just your top choice, but filling out all five increases your chances that one of them is available. When you're done with that, at the bottom of the form, you'll see a submit button. Make sure you click submit. If you don't click submit, it will not register your choices. Now I am going to use the timestamps. Look at this first column here. These are the times uh, for each one of these submissions back in uh, February 7th. Notice that I opened the form at four o'clock, which is 1600 hours, and it not much time went by and I got all these responses. So this is three minutes and 50 seconds after four o'clock and all these responses came in already. So like I said, they do go fast. I've whited out everybody's emails and names and phone numbers. Uh, but I just wanted to show you how I, uh, what kind of this, or what kind of method I use to analyze the data. The spreadsheet is set up to look at everybody's first choice, second choice, third choice, and compare them to basically the people above them. So the first person who submits automatically gets their first choice. And the next person that submits, they get their first choice as long as the first person didn't select it, which in this case is fine. Take a look at where the arrow is. This is the first, second, third, fourth, fifth person to make a submission. They took about 50 seconds to get their submission in. This person, their first choice was already taken by the first person. So that option is no longer available. Their second choice was taken by the second person. So they didn't get their second choice. But their third option, 2W, wasn't taken by the first person or the second person or the third person or the fourth person. So they ended up getting their third choice. 
and I continue like this until all the bunnies have been reserved. And at that point, I'll close up the form and then I'll start sending out emails. So if you are the first person to request a specific bunny, then you will receive an email about a half an hour or so after the form has opened. And I know you're gonna, it's, it's difficult, but just try to be patient. I'll get these emails out as soon as possible. I will tell you which of your five choices was available to reserve for you, and then you can decide if you want to continue with the reservation. If you choose to continue, you will use the information in the email that you received to submit your 50% non-refundable deposit, either through PayPal or Venmo. So it's a good idea to make sure that you have an option here all set up, ready to go. So if you do get the email saying that you have uh, the, the opportunity to reserve one of the bunnies, you can continue on with your deposit. If you don't have a PayPal or Venmo, maybe somebody that you know has a PayPal or Venmo that you can use. But please, when you send your deposit, indicate which bunny you are uh, sending the money in for. Sometimes I get emails or uh, PayPal's or Venmo's from people that I don't recognize their name, nor do I know which money it's for. So p please be specific. Write a little note in there about which money. And please submit it within about 30 minutes of receiving the confirmation email with those directions. After I receive your deposit, I will change the post on the bunny to say reserve for, and I'll put your name there. So for instance, this bunny has been reserved for Kelly. So I put Kelly's name and this one is reserved for Tara and I'll put that up on the website and I will move the bunnies from the bunnies for sale page because they're no longer available for anybody else to purchase. And I'll move them over to the already reserved page. So if you don't see them on the bunnies for sale page anymore, it's because they've already been processed. I've received your deposit and I put them on the already reserved page. Now, if I don't receive your deposit within that 30 minute window, then the bunny is surrendered and I'm gonna go back to the database and I'm gonna look at the next person who wanted that particular bunny. And I will contact that next person and they will have an opportunity to get that, or that deposit in. Unfortunately, we don't have enough bunnies to make everybody happy. I wish we did, but we only have so many moms and they need to rest and they need time uh, to just be a pet. They're not working all the time. They're not mothering all the time. Um, so there are times where they're down and they're relaxing and they're in between litters. So we really don't have uh, as many bunnies as we'd like to have to make all the families happy, but we have to do what's best for our bunnies. So if you are not one of the first people to request a bunny, don't be discouraged. There's a chance that somebody might back out or not pay their deposit. And if you're next in line, you might receive an email. It might take an hour or two hours, or if somebody backs out in a day or so, you might receive an email then. But don't be discouraged because there's always a chance that that will happen. And it's happened many, many times. And if that doesn't happen, again, I apologize, but please be patient and try again the following month. We have enough bunnies, enough moms, that every month or so we have some bunnies, some money months we have more than others. Um, but we try to make sure that we plan the breedings so that every month we have at least some uh, to go out there and, and go to some families' homes. All right, so hopefully this helps you understand the reservation process, and I hope to see you at the next reservation day.